Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at how you can use the count if formula to identify the well the number of occurrences and the occurrence number, should we call it, of an, an item or a number that's appearing in the list. We're going to be using the count if um or we're going to use a count and the count if function. If just to get yourself familiar, if uh, well, if you need a refresher or you haven't seen those um, our videos on how to use those functions, check out our previous videos. Uh, there's a part one and a part two uh, looking at count formulas, and there should be links on the screen now or coming up very shortly. Um, do give those a check out if you need a like say a refresher or if you have not even if you don't even know how to use uh, the count or count if functions. Great videos, and then you can obviously you'll be well prepped ready for this one here. So why would you want to know the occurrence? So uh, there could be many reasons, uh, of which many escape my mind now. Uh, but one particular reason could be uh, you've identified you've got some duplicates in a list, um, uh, and obviously that might not be desirable. And therefore, you might want to identify um, where the first, second, and third occurrences are coming from. Like, are they coming from different data sources? Or alternatively, if you have got duplicates in your list, and that's completely fine, and they should be there, um, by finding the occurrence, uh, you can filter on just the first occurrence that it appears, uh, what gives you obviously a distinctive list, or gives you a distinctive uh, count uh, if needed. Um, and there can be many different reasons as well. Um, but like I say, it, there can be many reasons why you need it, um, but we're gonna show you now how what you can do to implement it and obviously what the result you get from it as well so we've got some data here simple uh, names or a list of names in column a and you can see there's uh, four different names we've got Tom James Claire and Amy um, and they're just appearing multiple times in there um, so as you can see those are duplicates what we're going to do is Firstly, in column B, um, we can we can just do a simple count formula. This might be something you want to do as part of the process of doing the occurrence, but I'm going to say it will show you just how it works. So to do count, um, or you will be using count if for this, we can see how many times each is appearing in that list. So let's just do a little count if formula. We can select column A, as we know, and we want to just count it for the Tom in this instance. And we can see that Tom is appearing in this list uh, for four times uh, and that's all well and good and what we can do is if we just put a little filter on there um, and we go to Tom yep yeah, we can see that Tom is indeed appearing there four times but obviously each time he's appearing there it's just going to give the value of four because all it's doing in each form is counting how many times the, the name Tom is available in that list and it's the same for all the other ones there as well. So if we were to take Claire, you can see Claire is actually there seven times. Um, but if we were to filter on Claire, again, the same situation is that you, all you're going to get is that value of seven in each list. So the purpose of putting in the, uh, the slightly different formula uh, to identify the occurrence is we can see rather than having that, that count value in each one of those, um, each reference, or not each reference, but each, each uh, instance of where that name appears, what you'll have is a count of the first, the second, the third, all the way through to the total amount. And we'll enter that in here and then you can see how it works. So what we need to do is rather than just straight away count everything for each uh, row um, based on the whole of the column or the whole of the list in column A, we're going to do what you call a progressive uh, range. So basically as the formula in column C moves through the rows, the range in which it's going to be counting in will gradually grow. So firstly, what it will do is, um, in this very first one here in row two, it will only have a range um, looking at, uh, in column A, of A2 to A2. So it's only going to be looking at the cell reference. The second time, it will look only at A2 to A3. The third, or the fourth row, will then be only rows uh, two to four. And then uh, the fifth row will be two to five, so on, all the way to the end. And what that will do is, because obviously as it expands, um, the formula about to identify the number of times the name appears in that range was obviously going to gradually increase. So hopefully that's not confused matters. But what we'll do, we'll jump the formula in. So in order to do that and to fix our range, we're just going to be using um, some, or the dollar symbols, what allow us to um, fix a range. So it says, as we move, um, we want this range to stay the same, or this starting point to always be the same. 
So we're going to enter exactly the same formula as we did here in count, for column B, uh, the count if, um, but obviously using uh, this um, method uh, of the dollar symbols to enforce the starting point um, does not move or, and helps increase. So let's do that. We're going to do equals count if and open brackets. Okay, so we always want our range to start, and this is probably a good way to demonstrate it as well, actually. So let's say we we just selected a2 to a2 uh, and count if a2 so all we're doing here is just saying we're not putting the dollar symbols around we're just going to select okay this is the range we want to do and we want to count how many times tom appears in that range and hit enter as you can see as we drag this formula down the formula is always going to stay relative to uh, the row it's in so you can see for this first one it's going to count a2 in a2 but as it moves down, it's just going to reference all where those rows are. It's only this second part here, um, the part that appears after the colon, that we want to be dynamic and to move with the row reference. And we want this first part here, the first A5 before the colon, to be fixed to always start in column A or cell reference A2. So in order to do that, if we go back into row 2, and all we need to do is you can either highlight A2 and do F4 on your keyboard, or you can simply hold the shift and do number four, what will give you the dollar sign like that. And this is our slightly updated, but um, obviously this formula require. When I hit enter to that, and then drag that down to these first four examples we had here, you can see how we step through each one, that the first one uh, is still looking at A2 to A2 in terms of the range to look in. But then as we move down to row three, we can see it's now um, A2 to A3. And that A2 is always going to stay the same. So it's going to be A2 to A4 in row four, and then five so forwards. And then what we can do is then pull down the formula, and you can see it's updated. And Claire is probably one of the best ones to um, look at initially. So we can see that Claire, the first time she appears is in row four, four, and the second time is in five. And the reason we can pick up this first time, or the first actual occurrence she appears, so if we go into that formula, you can see it's only looking in that range of two to four, so it's only going to count her as once. But when we go to the second occurrence of her, you can see that the range is now updated to just go from our first starting point to our current starting point, and she's now appearing twice, hence why we now get the second occurrence. And if we can go to filter to Claire, you can see now what we have is we've got column B, tells us the number of times she is appearing. And in column C, we can now see the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh time that she is appearing, all clearly laid out for us. And another benefit of doing this as well, as we went to the very, or uh, we'll start at the very beginning, is if we wanted to get a distinct list. And we can now easily do that by just saying, okay, we just want to see the first occurrence for everyone. And there you go, that gives us just then our four names the first occurrence that they're all appearing, so we've got a nice distinct list, so everything only appearing once. And for these four, we've got a little summary here, so we can see, obviously, that Tom's appearing a total of four, James five, Claire seven, and Amy three. We hope that was a really useful video. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a solution we've used many times, what's helped us solve many problems, or just get the data into a quick way to be able to just do some real quick analysis or jump through it. Um, if you did find that useful, please do give the video a big thumbs up. And also, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit that notification bell so you get notified of our, all our new videos as they hit YouTube. As always, links in the description you'll find, or the first link you'll find is a link to download this workbook. So you can get this exact workbook in the format you now see. Uh, so you can actually dive into the formulas, give it a try for yourself and obviously try some other scenarios if you think of them as well. Uh, also in there, you'll see links to our website and Facebook page. So if you haven't looked at those before, why not take a look, uh, take a look now? Thank you very much, and we will see you in the next video.